In this tutorial, we will create only the solid model of the machine part that you are now looking at. Of course, there are many ways to draw anything, but what you will see here is my way based on 20 years of design experience. Here is the completed project. The 2D drawing and the solid model are shown in paper space using two viewports. The first thing to do is to erase the viewport containing the solid model. It will be recreated later on. Since the solid model will be created in model space, I'll now click the model space button. Notice that the 2D drawing still exists in model space and that I split the screen into two vertical viewports. The new drawing of the solid model will be created on the blank screen on the right. I created the two vertical viewports leaving the 2D drawing intact on the left to be used as a reference. Now let's proceed to make the solid. The first thing to do is move into a southeast isometric view and start the box command using a 3D wireframe. The length will be 6.80, the width 3.75, and the height 2.83. We want to remove material from inside the box and so it is desirable to use the shell command. Therefore, I will switch to the top view of the box. Now we click the shell button which is located on the solid editing toolbar and select the box. However, we do not hit enter because we are now asked if we want to remove faces. Obviously, since we want to remove the top face, we select a point in the center of the box and hit enter. The command is still not completed because we are now asked to enter the shell offset distance. At this point, we type 0.62 as the offset distance and hit enter twice to finish the command. And now we will move into the southeast isometric view to check out the box. By using the constrained orbit on the view toolbar, we can see that the object is empty and has no top face. And if we add shading, we can see that the work we have done is correct. Everything seems okay, so we go back into the wireframe mode. Now we will draw a line from the midpoint of the bottom horizontal line straight up. Now we will draw a horizontal line from the lower left corner to the right, extending beyond the box. And we will offset the line just drawn upward a distance of 1.73. At this time, we can also erase all unnecessary lines. The next step will be to extrude the 0.85 diameter hole a distance of minus 2, and then, of course, we have to subtract this hole from the box. Now we want to create the rectangular hole in the bottom of the box. To accomplish this, we will first draw a straight line on the top from the upper right corner to the lower left corner of the box. Next to the box, we will draw a rectangle with a length of 4.30 and a width of 1.25, and again draw a straight line from the upper right corner to the lower left corner. Now we'll move the new rectangle from its midpoint the midpoint of the diagonal line to the midpoint of the diagonal line on the box. And also erase any unnecessary lines. Finally, we want to extrude the rectangle a distance of minus 4 to be sure that it will pass through the bottom surface so that when it is subtracted, it will create a rectangular hole on the bottom of the box. The drawing now shows what the box looks like before the rectangular solid is subtracted from it. The drawing looks okay to me now, so we will switch to the top view 
and go back to using only one viewport. Having finished the solid model, I want to get back to paper space to view the drawing properly and make it ready for printing, so I'll click on the Layout button. Now, to create the small viewport, I'll use the M view command and create a rectangular window by selecting two opposite corners. And then I'll double click inside the small viewport, switch to isometric view, and pan and zoom to enlarge the solid model. To get back to paper space, don't forget to double click outside the viewport. Also, you must remember that when using paper space, the entire drawing should be printed at a scale of 1 to 1, even though individual viewports can be set to different scales. You set the scale of the large viewport by selecting it and clicking on the Properties button, and the standard scale is found under Miscellaneous. That is where you set a scale for a viewport. Once the scale is set, double-click inside the large viewport to gain access. You cannot use the zoom command at this time, but you can use the pan command so that only the 2D drawing is visible. To accomplish this, it's sometimes necessary to move the solid. Finally, if we don't want the large and small viewport rectangles to be printed, we can go to the Layer dialog box and freeze the Layer viewports, which is where the viewports are located. The drawing is now complete. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please make a comment, because I do enjoy hearing from you. Thank you for watching.